Damn, this thing is cool. Yo, what's good? So Pioneer sent me this to uh, just try out, you know, tester, sample, basically. They didn't ask for a video. They didn't say only positive, only negative things. But uh, I wanted to do a video on it anyway because it's a really neat product and it does a few things that I wish some of my other sequencers would do. And honestly, I started off liking it and then it got kind of annoying. But then I really, really started to like it. So what do I mean by all this? Well, let's check it out. Okay, for starters, it's the simple things in life that matter, right? So on the squid, you can adjust the brightness of it, but not just the general overall brightness. You actually have control of the brightness for each state of the pads. For example, when it's bright, how bright, when it's dim, exactly how dim. And on top of that, you also have general control over the buttons and the display all independently. And I know this might seem small, but this is one of the reasons why I'm considering getting an Octatrack Mark II over the Mark I is because it has the backlit buttons. And when you're performing live, to be able to see what you're pressing and doing is super important. But to be able to control how bright that device actually is, that's taking it a step further and to me is a major plus. Next after that is the rhythm section. So this is the phrase arrangement section. Pretty boring name, I'd rather call it something cool like the Rhythm Mastermind 9000 Control Center or something a little simpler like the rhythm section. But what's nuts about this section is that all of this can be layered upon one another. So I got this little beat going. And if it sounds like you're hearing a little glitch, it's the, uh, the, LB, the LDB1, not the Pioneer. So I have the kick on two, hi-hats on three, and I can start modulating speed on three. Ah. Ooh. So say I like this super chuggy. Give it some swing. Maybe some groove bend. And I can even record this in. And then change the direction. Don't like something. Delete it. Ooh. Yep. All right, before I get carried away. Where this blows my mind is that it's MIDI, not audio. So your synth that's being sequenced or your drum machine that's being sequenced by this thing can still be manipulated in real time. And what makes this feature even cooler is, well, forgive me, we're about to get a bit nerdy here, but the information that you record into the sequence is in a sense, not really, but kind of quantized to a grid. And yes, you could take quantization off, which is awesome. And I know this might sound like a bad thing, but it's kind of sitting in a section of its own and then you can apply all this stuff to it. This means that everything you've done is kind of in a safety net that essentially is if you push it too far, you can dial it back to the safe zone without destroying the original pattern. Okay, so not talking about drums or percussion. If I had this sequence of notes and let's say I enter in these chords. I can go and delete the chord part of the sequence, but still have the melody. Check this out. So this was a true pleasure to stumble across to see that I can add stuff and take it away without destroying things. Which also leads me perfectly into my next point, which is that the pattern sets are non-destructive. And if you're not familiar with what the pattern sets are, it's essentially a scene in Ableton, like a, a grouping of patterns that will all launch at the same time. But where the squid is crazy smart is that if I go and I make a change within a pattern set, it won't destroy the pattern set that I was already on. It'll just want to save this as a new pattern set somewhere else. This is best to be seen. So here, check this out. Okay, so here I have a pattern set, right? And within it, uh, this track is playing that pattern and this track's playing that pattern, this track's playing that pattern, right? So looking at our pattern sets page, it's highlighted, which means that that pattern set is currently playing, which is this, right? But let's say I go to track here and create a new pattern and maybe no pattern, right? So then when I go to the pattern sets page, 
it's no longer highlighted, which means it's just waiting for me to save it to a new spot. Let's just say here. Cool, so now we still have the original one I was started on with everything still incorporated, the new one with nothing. And what's even more clever is if I go to a track and I select a pattern set that's already been made, if I go to pattern sets again, it'll be like, hey, you already made this, don't waste space, it exists right here. That was incredible to see. It's just fun as hell and really fast to use. Once you kind of get used to the way it's set up, it's really, really simple. And it reminds me a lot of the little bit of time I had with the SP16 at KnobCon, I believe it was, where it just, it just kind of makes sense. You'd be like, oh, I want to change this. I'm guessing it would be this and that, or maybe shift and this. And that's exactly how it was. On the surface of things, you have a ton of control over the things that you would probably want the most. Everything's at least maybe one menu page deep, which is not a lot. And a lot of these things don't even have menus to them. And I really didn't have to dive back into the manual to learn or figure things out. It's pretty on the surface, which it made a lot of sense, at least to me. Step editing on this thing is incredible. And I've been saying this since I first saw it at Moogfest, which is they've taken every good Eurorack sequencer, made it polyphonic and available to MIDI and smashed it into this box. You got Renee stuff, Metropolis stuff, you know, speaking of Metropolis, just the ability to add counts to, let's say a track, like playing this, I can say, cool, two counts here, a divide here, and then kind of bring it back onto the one is one of the reasons why I loved the Metropolis so much. And it's also one of the reasons why the Metropolis will probably never leave my studio. But the fact that they've added a lot of those features onto this with a lot of functionality towards MIDI is, is amazing. I mean, here, check this out. So say I have this simple beat, right? Let's add some sounds onto track three, which are also going to the Deltronics. So we'll just say, Right? So now let's start adding some counts and divides. Divide will play multiple, right? A count will offset things. So it'll stay there for three steps. Do another one here. And take the divide off that. So cool but it's all over the place now, right? It's probably gonna take like 9,000 bars for it to kind of come back onto the one. That's where this button comes into play. The fixed length, if I hit that and I look at it, shift fixed length, it's gonna show me four beats. So it's gonna take four beats until the master clock, which is running in the background, will reset it. But I can change that. I can say I want it to be eight. So it'll just kind of keep jumping around in this weird timing and then eventually reset. You'll see it resets right here on the seven watch. Boom, actually on the eight. Five, six, seven, yeah, bam, right there. You can see it right there. So that alone is incredible. Give that some swing. Some mod to the speed. Oh my God. The fact that I can get it this crazy, but then easily just be like, you know what? Never mind. Let's just get it back dead center. It is so much fun. Okay, so here's a quick bonus that I figured out the other day in case you're looking for a sequencer that can record eight bar patterns. This only does four, right? But what's tight is if I change the count to two across the entire pattern, basically saying play each step twice, and then you change the quantize, over to 30 seconds. It allows you to actually access the double notes within each pad. And what's even crazier is that it allows you to record two notes onto a single pad at different positions. So essentially giving you access to the 16th of the eight bars quantized to 32. If that makes sense, you understand it. If it doesn't, you might not need that to do something this crazy yet. Okay, so being super true, it was really hard to pick five things that I really liked about the sequencer because there's a ton. The UI is awesome. And honestly, I'd really like to see who designed this thing because it just makes a lot of sense. At least to me, it really clicked with me. It reminded me 
of some of my machines that I feel will never leave here that just made so much sense the second I turned them on. But that doesn't mean it's perfect. There are a couple cons to it, not many, and some will, will probably be like fixes with a firmware update, but um, yeah, let's, let's check those out. All right, let's jump into the big one first, which is pattern changes per track. This has pattern changes per track, which means you have 64 patterns per track of the same exact sound. If you're not familiar with what program changes are, it's just changing the preset of a synthesizer or the bank or pattern of a drum machine. So instead of being able to build a live set inside of one project, and then let's say have patterns one through eight be one program change and one preset, and then nine through 16 be song number two in the next preset, you actually have to change the entire project. Okay, so then why not just change the project to the next song? That's because you can't actually jump between the projects quickly. It takes a couple seconds to load, and then when it does, it doesn't actually continue playing. It stops the sequence altogether. So if I was performing live with this thing, technically I can, you know, play the same sound worth of 64 patterns of four bars each over and over and over again. I would probably never do that, but you can if you wanted. And yeah, it's very quick to improvise and change things up and keep it interesting. But I think it's pretty beneficial to be able to have the ability to prepare maybe a song or two ahead of time, because trust me when I say this, I've been there. Nobody wants to watch you make a song live, and come on, we've all seen the uh, bad against the clocks. But I can't really prep songs on here because if I did, I would have to stop the show altogether, load a new project, and while it loads, tell a few jokes to keep the mood light. And on top of that, it doesn't even wait until the end of the bar to switch between projects while the sequencer's running. It'll just go as soon as you hit enter, and maybe that could be some weird hacky thing where it'll use that time to load the next project. I don't know, the coding or the processing of this stuff is probably way more intense than we actually realize. Now, there is an upside to this, which is one of the ways that I perform now, which is don't use program changes at all. Why this is nice and beneficial is because I currently do this with my drum machines. You can advance the song manually when you feel that the time is right. So on something like the Squid, you can be playing track one, bass pattern one with bass sound one, right? but then you want to start incorporating new elements of the upcoming song, then you can bring in the pattern of track two for the bass, but still have the bass sound of track one. And again, when you're ready, change the preset on your synth over to the next song. This is good in practice on some synths, but on something like a Moog Siren, where you don't really have a screen to actually know what preset you're on, it's a little more difficult. And in preparation for your live set, you will have to kind of reorganize your presets to be in order of the songs you want to play. Most synths come with like a librarian or an editor, so it's not that bad. But this way you're kind of DJing with live instruments and remixing your songs by putting in stems and taking things out whenever you want to. So the program changes per track versus patterns. You know, if you squint, you can see the silver lining in it. A performance page, something simple fix, I wish. Um, since you reason that came across this was because if I'm in the CC pages, right, where I'm in the CCs, and I'm using this knob to control the filter of my synth or whatever while I'm performing, let's say I wanted to change the pattern or mute the kick drum while I do this. If I go to track mutes, that's no longer on and I no longer have control of my CC. So maybe you can take this a step further and allow the ability to have a performance page where each CC can also be its own independent MIDI channel. So I can have the filter for all my synths or decay time for a synth and then tuning for the kick drum or something weird and allow that to stay there while I jumped around to other pages. Or I could just stop being lazy and probably grab the synthesizer that's gonna be right next to the sequencer anyway and just use that knob on there. I don't know, take it or leave it. I guess it's kind of a complaint. Global swing and global parameters for the groove and rhythmic control center 9000 thing that we got over here. Basically the way it is now, you hit a track, you set this, hit a track, set this, hit a track, set this. And this is just the swing. That's all I'm changing. So I want to apply the swing to all my songs because I, or all my tracks because I want all the tracks to swing together, right? For the most part. Sure, you can argue that you want it to be another way. Music subjective, everybody's correct, and nobody's correct at the same time. 
So I think I have a simple fix for this. Maybe this would work. My easy solution would be to hold down the global button, adjust the swing or the groove bend and whatnot, and have that apply to all the sequences or all the tracks at once. But again, who knows about the architecture of this thing because coding could be very difficult, especially when it comes to implementing user interface stuff on something with this small of a screen that's already has, you know, it's almost set in stone at this point. Okay, well, that's really it. My quick-ish sum up of my thoughts on the squid. And uh, yeah, will I be getting one? Oh yeah. Will I be using it live? Probably. I think where this would be really well suited in its current state with the pattern changes per track, not pattern, no, wait, program changes per track, per pattern, not track, to me is better suited in the studio because I can set it, forget it, and do some project stuff versus live manipulation stuff. So what I would like to do is pair this with the Octatrack and record sequences of my synths into the Octatrack in perfect quantized bars to use as stems when I play live. I hope I said that right. That was a lot to kind of spit out. But anyway, at $5.99, this thing is really, really hard to beat. And um, yeah, that's really it. I guess I'll see you next week. You already know the drill. Share the love, share the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Peace.